Okay, welcome back to the channel. So, first of all, I'd like to make an apology. Obviously, it's been a few weeks since I made a video. Uh, life has just been very hectic, and as much as I'd love to be doing this full time, the reality is I do have a full time job, a family, and other commitments as well, and sometimes just life gets in the way. Um, today's video, we're going to be doing something slightly different. Now, when I replaced the windscreen, it came with uh, a mirror mount, and um, obviously, this van has no rear windows, so the mirror is kind of pointless, but it did get me thinking about actually having a rear view mirror would be quite nice. So I've been looking around different uh, options and obviously you can have a rear camera um, and with a separate screen and bits and pieces. Um, but I did find a couple of videos about mirror dash cams. Now the advantage of a mirror dash cam is you can run two cameras, basically a front camera and you can also run a rear camera. But if you have a mirror dash cam, you can actually play the rear camera as your mirror. So the advantage of doing this in a van or lorries or motorhomes or anything really is the fact you don't need rear windows. You just have the camera and it still acts as a rear view mirror. So that's basically what I've done. So I've gone out and bought a dash cam or mirror dash cam. Uh, that mounts onto an original mirror. So I bought an original Golf mirror, I think it was, that basically connects to the Volkswagen uh, Boss that's on the windscreen already. So I put that on and then basically I can attach a dash cam mirror onto that. So I'll show you what I've bought and we'll go through putting it up in the van and setting it up. Okay, so this is the mirror dash cam that I actually got. So this obviously is not sponsored by anybody. This is just one I had a quick look on uh, eBay and Amazon, and this is the one we decided on. So it's a 4K front facing camera. Uh, the rear cameras, it just depends on what you specify with it. Different cameras come with different uh, rear setups. Um, the one that came with this is just a HD 1080p camera. So. It's fine for what it does. Uh, it hasn't got the clarity of the front facing camera, which is kind of the more important one because if the front facing camera is if you're having an accident or something is where you need the evidence. Rear one, like I said, it's just gonna act as a rear view mirror for me. So uh, the 4K on the front and the HD on the, on the rear is fine. Obviously we'd love a HD 4K camera on the rear, but uh, nobody seems to do them just yet. Although technology obviously moves on so quick. So this was, I think, about £120 on Amazon. I have had it a little while. I had to get the rear camera mounted to get on and do some other work. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do the bits and pieces I've been doing inside the van. So I had to run that wire. So I got this and I've already opened it, but I'll show you basically what's in the box. So apart from the rear camera, which is already mounted, and I'll show you in a bit, when you open the box, obviously you've got your instructions. Okay, it's a 4K front facing camera. You get the mirror itself which is a mirror but when you turn it on it becomes a screen so that works really well. Obviously front facing 4k camera. Microphones underneath, power button and then on top you've got your connections for USB, um, the power cable, uh, memory card and a GPS um, input. Strangely, the GPS has this uh, three and a half jack plug, which is quite unusual for GPS. Most GPS have um, a little screw in uh, connector. I'm not quite sure what it's called, but, uh, and it didn't come with a GPS, although I have bought a GPS module, whether or not it works with this, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So that's the mirror itself. And then in the box, you get a um, power cord that, connects to the cigarette lighter so that's straightforward easy enough to connect up there's also a hardwire kit that comes with it which um, again fairly straightforward I think it's got battery so it must be a permanent 12 volt uh, accessory 12 volt and then a ground connection and that's fused and ready to go and then you have these rubber um, mounts that basically hook on and then they go around the mirror, so they basically mount the mirror to your existing mirror in the back, in the uh, car or van, whichever you're using. And the other little bits and pieces, cloth and 
that was part of the mount for the rear camera. So if I turn the mirror on itself, you can, because um, it's got a battery in it and I've charged it up already. So it comes on. There's no memory card in here at the moment, but it comes up with the menu on the screen and you can then change the view. So if you swipe left and right, because the rear camera isn't connected on this at the moment, you, you can't actually um, see it, but we'll show that in the van. But press the uh, setup button and that comes up with your menu for all your bits and pieces, resolution, the loop recording, you can set the different times, um, HDR, the audio, whether you want audio on it or not, timestamps, you, again, you can add date and time to it, G sensor, you can, I think you can uh, adjust the sensitivity. Yeah, so I'll do that low. Uh, parking guard, whether you're so obviously because it's got a battery and it, once it's hardwired, it'll have uh, power all the time anyway. So you want the parking guard on, whether you want to put your license plate on it. Auto power off after a certain time, screen saver, power frequency, um, USB mode, black mirror speakers. So there's quite a lot to uh, set up on it. Uh, you format your uh, USB card and test the GPS and you can change the units from kilometers or miles per hour which is quite handy obviously we do miles per hour here in uh, Britain but other countries use uh, kilometers so yeah quite easy to use and set up so we'll um, get this out in the van put it on mount it up and uh, see how we go about um, sorting it out. Okay, so the first thing I've done is mount the original mirror to the windscreen. Now I think this was from a Golf or a Touran or something like that. It was, it's basically a Volkswagen generic mirror. They're all pretty much the same. Slightly different mounts on the back of them. Some are longer than others. So, I mean, you can probably get one for a craft or somewhere. I would have thought that's pretty much up to the job. So these literally just twist on. Uh, there's loads of videos on YouTube about how to take these on and off. Um, so to put this on, you literally twist it through about 90 degrees and it'll pop off and pop back on. So I put it on, ready. And then the next job then is to grab the dash cam itself and these two rubber clips. So what they do is we put the rubbers on the back and then put the mirror onto the original mirror and then literally just clip into the it's really really easy to do I'm not sure how long these will last because obviously they're in the sun and but that is pretty much it for the mount so that's so then you look at it exactly the same way as you would do with a normal mirror but obviously because the back of the van is solid uh, there's two bulkheads and a bed and all sorts in the way you can't see through the back of the van so by adding the camera now the camera i've already run through the van because i had to put the roof lining in and bits and pieces i wanted to do that first so i just thought i'd add this clip in here quick this is where i've mounted the rear camera basically this is the plinth that holds the number plate lights and there is a rubber grommet up in here with the space so i screwed it this little bracket that came with the camera screw to this and then the wire just comes up behind and if I show you that from the other side of the door so at the back of the door you've got these wires coming in so these two main ones are the number plate lights these are the loom for the door the original loom and this is where our camera is coming in so this rubber grommet is standard it's on all the vans we've had so far so uh, I believe there is an option to have a camera down there so just poked a little hole in there and pushed the wire through. It's nice and tight, so it's waterproof. And then this cable comes up through. So this, we've just taped to the back of the door for a second, but this is the plug for the camera and this is the extension cord that came with it. So that's just plugged in. It'll be um, heat shrink, so keep it nice and tight. But this red cable is the one that goes to the rear reversing lights and it puts on a display for the screen that shows you distance, etc. So there is a fault with this one because when I put it in reverse, it freezes. Now, I don't know whether it's because this system isn't compatible with the van 
or whether there's a problem with the camera but we've uh, complained about it and they going to refund us and we're going to get another one so hopefully that will be sorted out so from that plug then this is the extension cable and it goes basically up into the door into the concertina wire connector and then to the front of the van and obviously that red cable goes down to the light into the reverse and light so we'll get back to the video main part and uh, back at the front of the van first so the, the wire for the rear camera is here so that's ready to go in already so pull that down and that goes into there so that's AV for the rear camera so I'll tidy these wires up in a bit obviously there's the headlining and all sorts to go back in here yet yeah, but that's basically that so I can put that out of the way that plug there is for the actual light for the center console bit so that's all ready to go and then the power cord we just wire it up with the generic one for the cigarette lighter for a second Just for testing so that goes into that one and then we can go on to the power and it immediately powers on so it's got 12 volts supply it basically is on all the time but I don't know whether that's just because that's the, the cigarette lighter socket Hopefully when I hired hardwire the kit in, it won't do that and it'll just shut off when the car shuts off. But it'll have power so then if somebody knocks the car, it will record. Now, because the rear camera is plugged in now, should have the rear camera. So that's my gate on the back. And... If I swipe it again you should have half and half so that's the front half and the rear half which is really handy as well if you need that I mean the front screen you don't really need on at all because you can see the front anyway the only reason I bought it was just for the rear so that acts now as a rear camera so that will stay on now the whole time that we're driving and you can use that then as a rear view camera I'll put a clip in now of the rear camera working as I'm driving along So now we've established that it actually works, we can um, go ahead and sort out the hardwire kit for it. So with the hardwire kit, there is um, accessories and bits and pieces in the bottom corner of the uh, car, so we'll uh, wire it up to that. Okay, so underneath this side panel is... Um, basically uh, takeoff points for power so there's um, ignition lives and permanent lives for accessories that literally what it's built for so to get to this I mean, you can probably get this panel out but you probably need better off taking off this side panel to remove this panel you need to take out the side piece which reveals your screw there uh, there's a screw underneath and a screw in here, which is this panel. The covers there it literally just pops off. So grab a screwdriver for those.
So in here is your power supplies. So you've got four ignition lives and four permanent lives. Okay, so with the ignition off, I'm testing these. So that's onto earth, and the big red cable is 12 volts, and the black and yellow, nothing. The ignition on to the accessory position. And then black and yellow is also 12 volts. Not sure if you can see that. So, obviously, I've already used one of these to power up the um, fog lights, and that is already in the fog light video. So, again, we can wire up that power supply red one is a constant power and the black and yellows are ignition lives now these are actually supplied with uh, fused connections so I think what I'm going to do is do away with air fuse holders because you can't actually change the fuse on them Put a couple of little inline fuse holders myself. So this power fitting here is actually a plug, and uh, you can unplug it. You just need the right sort of connectors to put into it. So the connectors that will fit these aren't exactly the right ones, but they they are sort of generic ones you can buy on eBay, and they will fit in there. So what I'm going to do is put two of these on, two fuse holders. I'm going to cut the fuse holders off this loom because I just don't have these anyway. So I'm going to cut these off, put the fuses through there, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll get that done off camera a second. Okay, so what I've done is chop those two little fuses off that were on the, the wires and put them on here. Now I'm not 100% sure that these need to be fused because I wasn't really sure how that worked. So I cut one open and basically all they've done is solder a wire to one half of the fuse which would work to a degree, it just depends on which way it is in the fuse box because if the power went to this side and the fuse blew you still get power whereas if it goes to that side and the fuse blew you wouldn't. So not 100% sure whether or not that should be fused but because there was fuses on there I've added them to it anyway so these are just two cheap fuse holders and a couple of cables connectors for the plug so these should go into here now I need to remember which side is which so that goes there so this side is the accessory and that's the other side is the permanent, so the permanent is this side. Now the permanent is the yellow one, goes to battery plus, so that's that one, goes to permanent. So that should, all being well, slot into there. So that slots into there clamped in and then the other side the same so that will slot into there locked in and then clamped in with the plastic so just to double check two accessories the uh, fog light this is the accessory one, which is the red one, which accessory, and then the permanent 12 volts goes to the battery. So I just need to do the earth, which I'm going to attach to one of these down here. Okay, if I bring you in for a closer look, um, if it goes off here. So, again, 
this is the plug. Got the two wires, two fuses. These are the original wires from the thing, two from the camera. Two fuse holders, two fuses into permanent live and an accessory live. So that can all go back in. Click into place, just cable tied it in together, tied it up wires. And then up on the A pillar, if um, put that box there and just tidied up the wire, then basically. So, in theory, I should be able to plug this in. And it all works. So we just need to tidy up all the wires now. If you are enjoying these videos, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel and uh, help us grow a bit. So there's um, a couple more videos in the works. Um, somebody requested a video about doing uh, the lowering the handbrake, which is a mod you need to do for um, swiveling the front seats. So I've got all the bits and pieces to sort that out and uh, hopefully that'll be next week's video. Uh, I've also been doing some CNC work ready for all the cabinets and bits and pieces. Um, Alan obviously has his uh, CNC router up there to build his units and we've been doing some bits and pieces for this ready. So there'll be uh, a video on that shoot soon as well. But that's going to be it for this one. Please like and subscribe as I said and thanks again for watching. I'll see you again shortly. Thank you.